had some people contact me recently and ask what 3D printers I would recommend that they buy. So I suppose tis the season, let's have that discussion. Now there are affiliate links in the description and I hope that you'll forgive me for that because I do have a family and I don't want them to suffer for my life choices. So what 3D printers would I recommend? Well, let me first uh, mention in this discussion that I can only tell you about my experiences in my area and where you live, it might be a different discussion, but I do think that we need to keep in mind that no one 3D printer is right for all people and in all places. So let's start this discussion by asking a couple of questions first. First of all, why do you want a 3D printer? I mean, is there a specific project in mind that you're thinking about, or do you just think 3D printers are cool and want to get into them? Secondly, what's your budget? And how flexible are you on that budget? Would you be willing to spend just a little bit more money if it got you a lot more printer? Lastly, how much time are you willing to invest in this? Do you want to have a 3D printer so that you can play with it and tinker it and have a fun hobby playing with the printer? Or do you want a 3D printer that you can unpack and make things with because the output is the important part to you? With those questions in mind, the 3D printer that I recommend most often and that I am most impressed with is the Monoprice Select Mini V2 3D printer. This is a 3D printer that I have paid my own money for, not once, not twice, but three times. I absolutely love the Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer. It comes pre-assembled, you don't have to build a thing, you just pull it out of the box, level it, and you're printing with it. It can handle high temp materials, it's got a heated build plate, it's got a great user interface, it's got Wi-Fi. These are all features that I would expect in a larger 3D printer, and yet this 3D printer costs only $220. It's absolutely amazing that this printer exists at that price. Of course, it doesn't have all the features in the world. There's no auto bed leveling. It doesn't do slicing on the fly for you, but it is a fantastic machine for that price. And the best part about this machine is if you decide, you know what, I'm just not into this 3D printer. I'm not gonna use it very much. You're only out a little bit. And if you break it, it's actually pretty easy to repair or replace. Now, if you really can't spend very much money. If budget is a huge concern for you, my next suggestion would be the ANET A8. It's got a much bigger build volume, but you have to build this printer from scratch by yourself. It's gonna take you a long time. Now the sense of ownership that that gives you is fantastic. You feel like whatever happens to this printer, you got it because you built this printer. It is the most open 3D printer that I have ever seen and had hands on. And I don't entirely mean that in a good way. Like the, the circuit box is out in the open with nothing protecting it from you to just sit there and poke at it. So it's not a great 3D printer to have if you have kids or animals around that you're concerned about. But if you're a college student and you got time on your hand and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a 3D printer, I have gotten a lot of use out of my ANET A8. I'm not disappointed with the purchase at all. If you need something that's bigger so that you can make things for cosplay or larger items, I have kind of two recommendations, kind of. The Creality CR10 is a 3D printer that I did a video about, and I actually do love it. It's out of the box experience is fantastic. But I ran into some problems with this printer when I tried to expand its capabilities to its limits, because its limits are very much where it's at right now. It's very difficult to add auto bed leveling. It's very difficult to add filament sensors, anything beyond slapping a Raspberry Pi with a camera on there and you're kind of stuck with the functionality of that printer as it comes out of the box. But that out of the box experience for the CR10 
is fantastic. So if that's what you want, go for it. But if you want a 3D printer that you can possibly tinker with a little more, I might recommend looking at the TiVo Tornado. Now I have a TiVo Tornado right now in my shed in pieces because that's the way it came out of the box. I was not able to assemble this and have it be running day one like I was with the CR-10. The instructions said that I was supposed to be able to, but this printer came in pieces, more pieces than it should have. So I don't have any hands-on experience with it. However, by my research, it looks like I should be able to upgrade it further than I did with the CR-10. So while I don't have any hands-on experience to recommend this printer, I might recommend looking at it. Now, if you want a printer that is on the cutting edge of 3D printing, that has tricks and tips and, and a great community working on it and will allow you to fiddle with 3D printing and come up with new things and be a part of a growing 3D printing community, I recommend the Prusa i3. The Prusa line of 3D printers are always on the cutting edge of 3D printing, so they're a lot of fun to work with, and there's a great community surrounding them. Now, full disclosure, I don't have hands-on experience with the Prusa i3, but I love the Prusa line of printers. I love the people working on them. I love the things that they're coming up with all the time. So if you want a printer that you can fiddle with and a great community to fiddle with it, then the, I might recommend looking at the Prusa i3. Now at this point, we take a huge jump in price. You have to at this point be willing to just throw away any budgetary concerns and just spend the money on these printers. There are a lot of printers between uh, a couple hundred dollars and there are a lot of printers that are a couple thousand dollars, but there aren't a whole lot in between. Not that I would recommend. And in the couple thousand dollar mark, there's a lot of great competing 3D printers. Lulzbot is a great company and I love the openness of their systems. Ultimaker probably is making the slicer that you use, if not use, that you at least know. And their printer does dual support material. The Ultimaker 3 is really a solid machine and yet, all of these pale in comparison. If you're gonna spend that much money for a 3D printer, if I were gonna spend that much money for a 3D printer, the Rays N2 Plus is the only 3D printer I look at. This 3D printer is huge. Dual extruders, fantastic user interface. They say that you don't ever need to level the bed and I question that, but if I had the scratch, if I had the money to throw it at this printer, this is the 3D printer that I would get. It's solid, it's huge, it's really, really an amazing looking printer. I don't have any hands-on experience with it, but that's the 3D printer that I would get if I could. So there we go. There's the list of 3D printers that I would suggest at this time to buy, and I hope that you'll still do your research. Don't just take my word for it and go out and do a purchase, except for maybe that Monoprice Select Mini V2. If that sounds good, go get it. It's a great printer and I can't recommend it enough. And, you know, you're not out much if you fail. I wanna thank you very much for your view on this video. And if you have a suggestion of a 3D printer that you think I should check out in the coming year, go ahead and leave it in the comments so I can do some research. I wanna thank my very supportive Patreon backers and my new Patreon backers. Thank you guys very much for joining the family. I hope to keep doing great things to keep you around and thank you very much. I wanna remind you as always, safety first. See you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.